Um, no, and Jeff Bezos is always looking for new opportunities, and he found one really starting in about 2002. As you said, there's a lot of extra compute capacity in uh, data centers. Um, to even today, about 70% of a data center's computers are sitting idle. And um, somebody inside Amazon came up with the idea, well, we could make that uh, available to people outside the company as well. Mm. And that got it all started. Hillary, you look at this from your you know, entrepreneurial spirit at bit.ly.com. Who's doing the cloud best now? Is it Amazon? Is it Apple? Is it others? It's Amazon. I mean, this is a service I use every day, and they make it so easy to use that with just a couple lines of code, you can uh, spin up as many servers as you happen to need at the moment. The anecdotal clearly in support of Amazon. Richard Brandt, how worried should VMware, Citrix, and some the other players in the private cloud industry be, given that Amazon has this track record of trampling its rivals? Well, I'd be uh, fairly worried. Um, Amazon is, is just incredible in this space, as it is in most spaces. Um, Jeff Bezos is willing to invest whatever it takes to dominate a, a business. And um, you can see uh, in, in last year, he made uh, a lot of money in revenues, but um, I believe he uh, turned in a bit of a loss. And that's because he's um, investing so heavily in right. technology just like this. Well, Scott, that's a brand strategy to be investment first. That's clearly, to me, the Amazon distinction, is yeah. this guy's always putting the money to work. Can he sustain that? Well, it was interesting. You said that uh, Jeffrey Bezos is willing to invest. Not only is it Bezos willing to invest, but his shareholders have been remarkably willing to invest because mm -hmm. they come out and announce these staggering investments that take earnings from profitability to a loss and his investors reward him bidding up the stock. So it's not just Jeff Bezos that's willing to make these investments, it's his shareholders. Right, uh, Hillary, you look at all the spirit of this. This is a big, big company taking out. Michael Mabuson, among others, has written about how it's all gonna coalesce into five or six companies. The entrepreneurial spirit that you're doing at Bitly, that New York City's trying to do, can the little players sustain against big players like Amazon? What's amazing about Amazon is that internally they're broken up into tiny units that resemble startups. And so absolutely, I think we're organized the same way and they build services for people who are organized in that way. And in fact, Amazon is potentially building a service for the CIA, a private cloud there. As someone who uses Amazon's cloud services regularly, consistently, is there an issue with safety that the CIA should be concerned about? Well, I assume the CIA is wise enough to put their private cloud behind the kind of security we would expect. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a great idea because there's huge software portability, uh, things that are enabled by being able to take commercial software that runs easily on a public cloud and then use it in your private right. cloud. Richard Brandt, culturally, what is Amazon's best practice? Um, it's really the uh, ability to look at what its customers need. Um, Amazon is willing to allow other companies to come in, use its services, um, as long as it's something that benefits customers. Um, they're willing to sacrifice uh, their, their own business. They always take a very long-term view of uh, where the business is going, and this is why their shareholders are, are patient with the company, because Jeff Bezos always says, you know, let's look at um, what the future is, let's invest invest mm -hmm. in it no matter what, and he doesn't worry about what the stock price is doing quarter to quarter.